All right, so this video is about how to get good at latte art. Which milk to choose, how to steam it, how to pour it, what are the right techniques, how do you practice, all these, all these things are something that we're gonna cover in this video. Basically, latte art is something for everybody, for people who don't know, latte art is basically the design, quote unquote, that you make on the cup that you see. So you must have seen a lot of beautiful latte arts around the world. And you always have the ambition to make one. But before you start making a latte art, it's very important that your texture of the milk is beautiful. Texture does, I would say, 70% of the job. Now, by texturing, what I mean is, how do you steam the milk and how do you get the micro bubbles, which is silky, smooth and very nice and creamy. At the same time, it also makes the milk taste sweeter, by the way, if you steam it well. So this video is all about that. <music> First of all, whenever you're making a good coffee or a good cup of coffee, you need to make sure that you take optimum amount of milk. Now, for this kind of cup, this is a 220 ml cup, that's 8 ounces approximately. I would take this much amount of milk, this much amount of milk, which is just below the beaker. Another very important point is make sure you take really cold milk because the steaming would happen like 10 to 15 seconds. Colder the milk, more time you would get to adjust and also more time you will get to infuse the air in the appropriate manner. If you take room temperature milk, it is not going to work out. So now, first thing that I do is, in the steam wand, please everybody make sure you purge it really, really well. So that the steam is properly injected and the entire nozzle is pretty hot. And also if there is any residue left over here, that's out. So it's important to get your steam wand and the milk pitcher in a very good position to begin with. Now, uh, there's a very good technique. I learned it long back and I've been applying it to teach everybody about it. It's very useful. That's 150 and 25. So basically, you take this steam wand, put it on the spout, let it touch the metal, scrape through the entire metal and let it go down to the bottom. That is 100%. Now, just move the steam wand to the center while it, the tip is touching the base of the uh, jug. That, that is 50. Gradually tilt it a little bit so that on the left side of my steam wand, it's 25% of the entire pitcher and on the right side, it's 75. So basically, you're talking about 150 and 25. And the last thing is, you just want to pull down the pitcher so much so that the spout is just below the surface of the milk, just below the surface. So we've shot the video of me steaming the milk. Now I'm gonna watch that video and break it down second by second exactly what I did because at times when I'm steaming the milk, it happens all happens so fast that it's very difficult to break it down. So I'm gonna watch the video and while I watch the video, I'm gonna explain it to you. So I have placed my steam wand properly and that's my natural positioning of the steam wand. Now first of all, there's no right and wrong towards it. It's just the technique. If you start following it, Gradually, your muscle memory will just adjust the picture towards the steam wand easily. Now, I'm starting the video where I steam. Alright, so I've infused the air and the moment I infuse the air, I realized that the steam wand is super powerful and there's a lot of air that has been infused. So, the fraction, the moment that happens, I actually know that I have to make the vortex go for a longer time. Vortex is basically the circular moment, right? So I see that and immediately I spring into action of tilting the jug. Right now you see the bubbles around. Now I want this to spin. So you'll see a lot of vortex going on. I see some bubbles which are getting a big bubbles that are getting formed, which is not good uh, right near the steam wand. Now the entire point is I want to start breaking it. Now you got to remember that the time is getting shorter because the milk is getting heated up and you have to immediately do those movements uh, and you cannot wait for that. So now the bubbles are getting formed, I'm adjusting my picture, now the vortex is coming. So the bubbles basically, I want the bubbles to get sucked into the vortex and at the same time I don't want more air to be infused because that will just create more aeration and I don't want that. And now my steaming has begun. So it's in a circular, nice circular motion. Uh, it's getting warmer. It's 
yeah it's good now so now it's stabilized and now i know one thing that i have to move my picture a little bit up i did that i don't know if you could observe that but 0.1 mm probably i just moved the picture up and i am adjusting my picture leaning towards the left that so that i want more vortex to spin around and now i know it's hot enough that i have to stop now this is very important the moment you take your hand away to push the lever down at times if your picture is basic if your if you if your picture is being supported by your right hand the ha right or left hand whichever hand is about to move the knob a lot of times your picture will drop down so my entire point is your one hand will be holding the picture the second hand is not supporting the picture it is just checking the temperature all right you can give a little bit of support this gradual support to it but don't keep your picture placed on the other hand because the moment you take it out your picture will fall down and you're gone so you just kind of touch it a little bit so now my hand is going up and i'm trying to switch off the knob and i switch off the knob and my steam wand is still there make sure you don't remove the picture while the steam is still getting out all right so that's a fraction of second early if you remove it there's still going to be more air and then the entire point is gone so this is a good sign i've taken out the picture it's nice if you see you get that texture and shine and i can sense that this temperature is not more than 60 5 62 look at that shine my god i love that shine so that shine is also a good indication uh, that the milk is properly steamed also you see the steam wand has some kind of microfoam stuck there are no big bubbles that's also positive sign i keep that down and the first thing i go for is clean the freaking steam wand please clean the steam wand always always uh you've got like around 7 8 seconds before the milk starts settling down so you can clean the steam wand purge it uh give your milk a little bit of stir and then start pouring now uh it's time for me to give you tips about how to practice at home a lot of people don't know how to practice latte art at home a lot of people just think pull out an espresso start pouring start doing all this jazz that's not going to help out in the long run trust me about it yes by making a lot of coffees behind a bar uh you do ultimately kind of understand but i have also seen a lot of people uh who say that i was getting the latte art till yesterday all of a sudden it's all gone the reason for that is because you don't know what is happening what was going right basically you don't know so what i would say is what you can't measure as everybody knows what you can't measure you can't improve or however holding your milk pitcher you can hold your milk pitcher in several ways like this like this like this however when i teach i just let everybody know that do one thing just put your index finger over here let it dangle all right and now just lift it up and give it support with your small finger and then put your finger over here and now hold it like a pencil you can yes directly hold it like a pencil but for you to understand how this metal object works or what is the dynamics of this thing is recommended that you hold it like this and then bring it over here so now this is the most important tip all right in pouring a latte art first you need to have control over how fast how slow all these things that you pour what happens after you pour fast is a matter of next lesson probably so here is a simple exercise for you guys to try it i'm going to fill this pitcher with water how i practice basically is there are just few movements in pouring let's begin slow fast high low front back right left so this you have to make sure one thing that your stream of water does not ever come like this all right it has to be nice and like a single stream so what you can do is you can have a partner who basically says things like high low front back slow basically is giving you instructions and you're just following it now as i mentioned earlier uh, you don't always need coffee to make a latte art all you need is basically a canvas the canvas could be soy sauce it could be yes i'm saying it instant coffee 
so what you can do is you can take a glass of water you can add two tablespoons of uh, coffee instant coffee in that stir it and just take like 20 ml of it that becomes your canvas and for the milk you don't need to always use the milk what you can also do is you can take water just add one drop of dish water dish washing soap in it and steam it up you will get a texture like foam to play around so you're not wasting coffee you're not wasting milk uh, and you can keep practicing again and again and again and instant coffee it's wasted it's not a problem the next tip i would add is for you to use different ratios of water and different ratios of milk while you're steaming now what i'm trying to say is let's say you've taken milk till here and water till here so your level is this much uh, if you do different ratios of milk and water and keep steaming you will kind of get a practice of the density uh, texturing in a way you know like the ratios would define or determine how dense your liquid is so you will kind of get a hang of it also so you can take 10 ml of milk 98 or 100 ml of water you can reverse it you can take 100 ml of milk 10 ml of water so you get good practice as to how you can play around with the milk and milk texturing this is a little advanced but you can try it out definitely and the last tip is practice on different milks this falls in the category of you trying to get your hands on how to steam the milk in different ratios of the density of the liquid in your container that will give you a better composition of your milk texture so by using almond soy or all these alternate milks what you can actually do is you get to know how the milk is behaving with your current technique so my technique for each milk actually starts changing uh, i can't delve into that right now because this is just an introduction for you you guys practice all the things that i've mentioned and put in put down in the comment section below if you have any good tips or if you like this video and if this helped you out so moving forward <laughs>